Ah, oh, I forgot the shot glass. Free ball! <laughs> Yay! This video is brought to you by Jack Daniels, the drink of choice. I do my content without alcohol. So do I, usually, but this was fun, so we're doing it again. <laughs> Yeah, that's a very good point, actually. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Yeah! We've got beverages. You know what time it is. <laughs> it's time for a Drunken Explain with Michaela and Josh. It is. This is not just a normal Drunken Explain or Let's Get Quizzical. This is a collaboration, guys. Yeah. It's a collab. My darling. Well, Big Ted's in shop. <laughs> Big Ted is in shop. <laughs> <laughs> Big Ted wanted to join in. Do you want to go get I want him? Just, I want him just to be in shot. He can moderate. He the... can moderate. <laughs> I mean, to be fair... And be like, that's not how it goes! Yeah, Big Ted's, uh, Big Ted's moderating the collabs from now on. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Big Ted. Big Ted has a YouTube channel! No. <laughs> <laughs> Which you imagine. But this is a collaboration because my darling Josh is a man of many talents. Not only is he a director, a writer, a drummer, he also is a business owner, an entrepreneur. Oh, thank you. I know. Painting and selling tabletop models for Warhammer games. And he recently started his own YouTube channel where he chats all things Warhammer. He has a few videos up now, so we thought it'd be the perfect time. Now he's got a bit of a back catalogue to do a little celebratory collaboration. Woo! So on his channel, he's going to be explaining to me... The Horace Heresy series. I have no idea what that is. So oh, if you're, you're... In for a treat. <laughs> so if you're into Warhammer or you want to watch me not know what I'm chatting about, then there'll be a link in the description to his video below. And in my video, seeing as there is not a Warhammer the Musical, I decided that today I'm going to be explaining the musical chess to Josh. And this is obviously also the show of the week, so link in the description to the soundtrack slash cast yeah. recording of chess. We also have a chessboard over there. I mean, I it's don't know really how. Nice I don't know board. how we're going to get the chessboard into into shot if we have it like in front of us because it'll be below the camera. But if you want to show people the chess set, now is your moment. <sighs> you literally don't know anything about chess, do you? I didn't even know there was a musical called Chess. Exactly. So. Just knowing that the title is Chess, yeah. what do you think the show is about? I think it could be about one of maybe two or three things. The first one is some kind of like race thing, a la Noughts and Crosses. Okay. Those books, that's the first thing that springs to mind. I'm going to say no, but yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of a missed opportunity, then, don't you think? There probably will be a Noughts and Crosses musical at some point. Probably. But anyway, but that's that's a no. Okay. So what are your what are your other theories? My other theory, like my next leading theory, is that it's meant to literally be about a chess tournament. Um, and then my last one, which is a bit more of an out there thing, is it's like someone basically trying to break down a conversation with somebody through the medium of chess. Okay, so number two is basically right, but... No, oh, so it's just about chess then. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not just about chess, but like, so the context... Chorus, so we don't get a chorus line of pawns doing the high kick then? <laughs> I mean, I don't... I, we do, don't we? No. <laughs> we do. We do, don't we? No, we, we don't. We do, don't we? We don't. It's not that kind of musical. Oh, there, there, a... is, there, there are no kick lines. <sighs> so many missed opportunities in the theatre. <laughs> Why are you so crusty in conservative theatre? Why? Are you ready? Yeah, let's do this. Let's chat chess. Oh. So, we start off in the nether space of... Theatre. <laughs> of theatre. In the nether sphere of the world. And the arbiter, who's like the chess referee, comes... <laughs> comes on stage. <laughs> what? Nothing else to it's Halo riff. No, oh no. Uh, so yeah, the Arbiter comes out and he sings a song about the history of chess and he's like, okay. it's chess, this happened, these two princes who were like fighting and one of them died and their mum was like, you idiots, why don't you just play a board game to settle this? And they were like, yeah, we could have used pretend soldiers, not actual soldiers. And that's how chess was born. Yeah, that and could then the... have been used to solve so many, so many civil wars and violent conflicts. Could yeah, you imagine, like, instead of, I don't know... Instead of World War II, it was just like, just MEGA CHESS, just everyone! Chess then we get into the story proper, so it is 
the dawn of the 1980s. The IT's 80s is just below the horizon. It's the Iron Curtain, it's the Cold War, it's the gulags and starvation, it's McCarthyism and paranoia. It's all there. Fucking hell, we're not messing around, are we? We're not we? messing around. Oh, yeah. See, that's what, that's what I meant, it's like, it's not just about chess. All of this shizzle's going that on. That makes a lot of sense, actually, just thinking about the geopolitics of the Cold War and how that yeah. manifested itself in society. Chess, that's actually a good metaphor. Yeah. We are at the World Chess Championships in Murano. There's a whole song about the fact that this thing is in Murano. They really want to mm. hammer it home that you're in Murano, Italy. And you've got the American current world champion, Freddie Trumper. Freddie what? Freddie Trumper. Trumper. Yeah. Okay. And his second, which I think is really weird, is like, what, are they going to go to New Jersey and duel each other? Why do you need a second in chess? But apparently so. Uh, his second is this lady called Florence Vassi, who is Hungarian, but was brought up in the West. That becomes important later. He also kind of works for slash gets sponsorships from Global Television, which is this American news network. And the guy who runs that is Walter. On the other side, you've got the Soviets. So you've got Anatoly Sergeyevsky, who is the other chess player. He has a second who we don't really meet, but his like manager guy is Molokov. And they're all in Italy for the world cha championship. Gotcha. Freddy is an absolute dickhead. Obviously there's a lot of tension between the US and the USSR. There's a song about it. Freddy just really isn't helping and he's just, being antagonistic in press conferences and being like, the Russians are dickheads, those Reds are not going to play fair, why is everyone getting on my case? And the press really don't like him. And Can't possibly think why if he's this antagonistic. Exactly. And Florence is just like, dude, can you just chill and not mention politics and just play flipping chess? They're kind of in a relationship as well. It's not like really overt because the musical sung through, so it's not like... Yeah, it's pretty cool. much. There's like a couple of like spoken lines here and then, but it's basically something. That's cool. Yeah, so it's not like massively over and you can kind of miss it, but then they've kind of got a thing. On the other side, on the Russian side, Anatoly is just like, mate, it's all about the chess, don't care about the political stuff, just loving chess. All about the chess, about the chess. chess. No. no checkers. <laughs> Boom. Both sides, not just the Russians, both sides are kind of like, yeah, it's a friendly game of chess and it's great, but like we need to win to show that we're the best. Kind of like the space okay. race and like everything. As we long don't as we mind. win, then as, it's long as, as long as we win, it's friendly, exactly. <laughs> so, oh, I hate those kinds of people. So Molokov is like, obviously you're going to win, but the, his second, that Florence chick, she's pretty hot. Like, you know, you could get in there and like ruin his game. And he's like, oh, so you don't think I can win? He's like, yeah, we just need to make sure. And Anatoly's like, dude, whatever. So they get to the first match. And basically the way the championship works is the first one to win six games wins the world championships. Okay. They start playing chess and then we get dancing chess pieces. So it's just the ensemble okay. in black and white representing the chess pieces and doing some like floaty dancing and stuff. Cause obviously on stage you can't see a chess set. Oh no, wait, before that, before that there's a song and there's like cheerleaders and they're like, we're here to sell you chess cause capitalism. Um, yeah. <laughs> We're yeah. here to sell you chess. Yeah. <laughs> then the chess match starts and you've got the dancing chess pieces who are being all the different chess blah blah blahs. And Freddy does a table flip and storms out of the game and everyone's like, what the hell? Global news television, the news people, they're like a sensationalist news website. So he's like, oh, if I stir up drama, it's more money for everyone. Woo, cause it's like drama. The Russians are like, dude, he's just being a twat. Why is he doing this? Florence is trying to do damage control. And they're all like, what is this? Like chess is meant to be chill and like gentleman like. Yeah, and yeah um, chess isn't a game of table flips. Yeah, no, it's not. Although having said that. So then Molokov gets Florence alone and he's like, hey, what's going on and she's like she basically insinuates that Anatoly was like following orders and trying to throw off Freddy's game so that he could win and Molokov's like no he was just playing chess your guy is just mental so they're like arguing and Molokov says I thought you wouldn't want to start a fight seeing as you're negotiating with a fellow Eastern European and she flips because Hungary was invaded and taken over by the USSR yeah, and they were, they? Her, it turns out that her father was one of the revolutionaries and he was captured by the Russians and they don't know if he's still in prison or if he's dead and she hasn't seen her homeland since she was five like she doesn't remember her parents it's really really sad so she's Jesus. like dude 
Don't be coming here with that Eastern European BS when you ruin my country. Wow. And you know what? When you put all that on the table, it's kind of hard to imagine why anyone who turned up to this chess tournament today thought it was just going to be about the chess when you put so much political, politically volatile material in one room. So Florence is like, sorry, let's stop the BS. Anatoly and Freddie need to meet. I'll arrange it at the inn, this hotel at the top of a mountain. I'll sort it out. So she goes back to the American camp, she's like, you've got to go meet Anatoly. And he's like, oh, you're on first name terms with Anatoly, are you? Okay, you're a traitor. And she's like, dude, I'm literally just trying to save your ass. And I've like been helping you for seven years and you just keep on being a dick, so stop it. So he storms off and she has a solo. I think in that song, it does actually hint that she kind of likes Anatoly because spoilers, although it's about to start happening, they end up kind of together. So she goes to the mountain, Anatoly's already there, Freddy's taking ages. This is them in their heads, just expositing to the audience. But he's kind of like, why is she here on her own? Maybe she's a spy, but she's pretty fit. She's like, he's gonna think that I had an ulterior motive for calling him here because Freddy hasn't turned up. Eventually, Anatoly breaks the silence being like, where's he gone? And she's like, maybe he walked up the mountain and he's late. <laughs> Because he doesn't like trams, and it's like, okay, hun, we're buying this. Is this, is this, is that really the best she can <laughs> That's come up literally, with? that, like, I watched it yesterday, that's literally what she says, like, maybe he walked. Maybe he walked, that's why he's late. It's like, because he doesn't like trams. Because he doesn't like trams. But at that point I'm going, alright, but how did he get to the tournament then? Because presumably that would have required some form of motorised... No, was, was Concord a thing in 1979? Um, and then they start having a duet where they're kind of sorry, starting to... I'm now to... just thinking that he's just, he's just there like walking to the tournament and he has to leave like months ahead of everyone <laughs> no, else. No, he's not walking to the tournament, he's walking <laughs> up the mountain! Okay, but does it... <laughs> Climb every mountain. He took a leaf out of the Von Trapp's book and was just like, Oh, we're back there again, <laughs> are we? <laughs> Do you reckon we've met each other on the way, like, to go, oh, hey, hey, still, still... Isn't Switzerland over there? What are you doing in Italy? Oh, we took a wrong turning. Oh, no. We've been <laughs> in these mountains for 50 years. <laughs> Is the war still on? No. They start singing a duet where they're kind of like, oh, we're, we're getting the feels. And Freddie walks in on them and is like, oh, so you guys are getting on, whatever. And she like storms out because she's like, whatever. And Freddie's like, dude, I've done a deal with Global. We're going to get lots of money. The match can restart. Boom. Yeah, so they restart the match. I'm not sure what happens. <laughs> immediately after that but basically like so they're they're doing the match and freddy is like falling apart and he ends up losing anatoly wins and for a reason that i cannot remember anatoly is like i'm defecting to the west i don't know why <laughs> i don't know why he makes that decision but he does um and he does this in the middle of a chess tournament <laughs> he's just won the chess tournament Oh, he's just won it, okay. He's cool. literally just won it and he defects. I think... Oh, that man's gonna get killed. I think it's because he's sick of the Russians making it all political and he thinks that the Western guys won't make it political. Oh. I think that's why. Oh, honey, sweetie baby. I think that's why. But anyway, so he decides to defect. I think one of the things I can't remember is that they probably have another duet together, like Florence and Anatoly, where they fall even more in love, but I've just forgotten it. But Florence helps him defect, and he comes out first day in the Western world, out on the other side of the Iron Curtain, and there's hundreds of reporters, well, as many reporters as the ensemble can afford, and they're all like bombarding him and he's like what the hell and water's there to meet him the tv guy and he's like did you organize this and he's like welcome to the west because it's all about money capitalism and like news gossip and stuff and anatoly is like what the hell they're all asking him questions and all of this stuff and he's like bombarded and then one of them says why did you leave russia why did you decide to leave everyone and he's like i didn't leave anything and then he sings the song that every single tenor sings Anthem, which is a great, great song. Is when it just he... called Anthem? Yeah, the song's called Anthem. Okay, cool. Every tenor sings it, and every tenor who wants to show off without any thought to intention throws in a top A to show that they can do it, even though it's not in the score. And if you're a tenor who doesn't do that, thank you, we need more of you. And he ends with, Let men's petty nations tear themselves apart, my land's only borders lie around my heart, and it's beautiful, big note, there's the chorus, singing, backing, ours, it's, it's beautiful. End of act one. Lovely. 
taking a drink before Act Two. Okay, that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I like I like the fact there's an anti-nationalist song in there. Yeah, I, that's what that's what I thought I was listening to. It was just like, yeah, nations without borders. We're into Act Two. It's one year later. The World Chess Championships are in Bangkok, so we obviously have the female ensemble members wearing stereotypical Bangkokian dress, and. Freddie comes out. Bangkokian dress. <laughs> I don't know if that's the correct Bangkokian word. Bangkokian dress. <laughs> Freddie comes out and he's like, hey, we're in Bangkok and it's great. We learned throughout this song that Freddie works for global television now and he's quit chess playing. Cut to Anatoly. He's come back to reclaim his title and he's with Florence. Florence is now his second going to J Jersey to shoot people. And they are fully... You missed my jewel joke right at the beginning of this video, didn't you? Yep. Florence is now his second. They are like fully in love. Anatoly is like, why is Freddie here? And Florence is like, it's just business. Like he literally is just working for the news network. It's got nothing to do with you. It's got nothing to do with me. We're over, we're done. It's you and me now, babe. And she's like, but have you heard that like, there's a rumor that your wife's in town. Like they let her out of Russia to be here. And he's like, I do not know anything about this. Why would they let her out of Russia? They never let people out of Russia. What the hell? Freddie and Anatoly have an interview and Freddie is like asking him all these personal questions. And he's like, well, what about leaving your wife and children behind in Russia? And plays a clip of all of these photos and videos of his wife and children. And he's like, I don't talk about my private life and storms out the interview. Okay. But then after the broadcast, Walter, American guy and Molokov, Russian guy, me and shake hands and they're like, hey, that interview was banging. Yeah, it's really like ruffled his feathers. And then the Russian guy is like, yeah, I think those pictures really helped that I sent you. And he was like, yeah, thanks for those. So is it's it like really, a conspiracy. Is it really that overt? Yeah, well, it's like behind the scenes, so no one else can see yeah, it, but I mean, we as like, the audience can see it. Is that overt for the audience? Yeah. It's like, like thank you very much for sending me those no, pictures, guy. No, You're not very welcome no. for helping me set up this <laughs> fake interview and all those no. phony pictures. Thank <laughs> you so much for all of your help Josh, in setting him Josh, up. Josh, Josh. Yeah. I was hamming it up for comedic effect. I don't Obviously, <laughs> in the show, they have that conversation like normal people would who didn't want people to know, I don't know that either. the two sides are colluding. This okay? whole thing sounds very much like it's on a level of no, it's thanks, not pal, for the fake pictures of the wife that's not here. Wait, is she actually here? I don't know yet. Yeah, on. she's here. They're doing all this. They've let Svetlana, uh, Anatoly's wife, out and they're setting up all these interviews and stuff to throw Anatoly's game so the Russian guy can win. And the Americans are like, OK, we'll help you do this if you can, like, free some political prisoners from our side. And the Russian guy says, you know what, this is definitely going to make him throw the game. And, you know, maybe we can free Florence's father because obviously he was captured during the Hungarian Revolution. And Walter's like, well, obviously, you know, that's fine, but there are some other people that will want freed as well. And the Russian guy is like, yeah, if he loses, I can talk to the guys in charge in Russia and we can sort that out for you. So that's why they're working together. Okay. Um, what happens next? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's it. Then we meet Svetlana and she sings someone else's story, which is like the sad ballad about how Isn't she... she in Russia? No, she's in Bangkok. Svetlana is in Bangkok because the Russians let her out of Russia to come to Bangkok so that Anatoly will get stressed about the whole his wife, but also his lover being there and all of the political pressure. So he will lose the game so that the Russians will win. So the Russians will be like, yay, we're the best. Everyone's now trying to get Anatoly to throw the game. I think the Russian guy lets slip to Florence that if Anatoly loses, they're going to release lots of political prisoners, including her father. So, and she's feeling guilty about the fact that his wife is here. And she's like, you know what, maybe you should go back to Russia, not only for my dad, but also, you know, to be with your wife and children. That's a bit messed up. Obviously, the American dude, Walter, wants him to throw the game because it's like all of these American political prisoners. So... I don't know if he's being open about that or if they're just trying to do things to try and get him to throw the game. Is it manipulative, don't you think? Yeah, no, it completely is. Obviously, 
obviously the Russian guy wants him to throw the game and none of it is working and it gets to the point where they are five all Anatoly and the Russian guy and Freddy, Freddy I think is privy to all of this stuff but he goes to see Anatoly and Anatoly is like hey what do you want why are you here why are you trying to get me to throw this game and then like freddy's like nah mate i'm here to talk chess the russian guy keeps on making this mistake and you can use that to win the final game and win the tournament he's like okay makes a nice change because so far he's the only person in this whole show that seems to actually care about chess no anatoly cares about chess anatoly has always been the only one who was literally just about the chess fair enough and so freddie coming and being like i want to talk chess well they called him Molotov. Like, they called the russian guy molokov that's I don't his name get why they didn't just half the american characters they called one of them smith and the other one wesson what smith and wesson if we're gonna have molokov we should have smith no but it's molotov cocktails you're thinking of Then it's the final game and the Arbiter is like, guys, whoever wins this, wins the tournament. Oh, oh, at some point before this, the two women sing I Know Him So Well. It's the final game and during the final game, there's a trio between Anatoly and Svetlana and Florence. I didn't really get what the trio was about. It's some kind of internal conflict. I honestly, I, I watched the, I, I, I watched the the thing yesterday i watched that song and i was just like i do not know what is happening so <laughs> anyway at the end of this so you're explaining <laughs> this to me and you say there's a trio it's kind <laughs> of about anatoly but it's kind of got well, they're like hands. they were like singing in the midst of the human chess pieces the dancey chess pieces and there was like there was dry ice and they were singing about take my words as writ or something. I, I honestly do not know what they were chatting about. At the end of this trio where I don't really know what's going on, Anatoly wins the game and everyone's like, oh my God, he won, foil. You were saying, you were saying. But he decides to defect back to Russia. So the Russians are still happy because it's kind of like a defeat because it's like, uh-huh, well, you know, you've come crawling back. The Russians are like, we'll still give you your political prisoners. Anatoly and Florence have a duet where they're basically like, if we can pretend that stories like ours have happy endings, but it doesn't. I love you, but this is how it's got to be. And they just shout at each other's faces for three minutes because that's what ballads in the 80s were <laughs> in musical theatre, was just shouting at people, like at your lover's face. But, so they've um, got a power and power ballad. Literally. And then... Oh, this musical, man. <laughs> all of the... All, no, but, no, this is the this final plot twist. All of the people walk away and Walter comes over to Florence and is like, you know, the Russians are happy that the fact that he's defecting back, so we're going to get our political prisoners, including your dad, if he's still alive. And she's like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> um, what do you mean, if? And he's like, well, we don't know if he's alive, but you didn't know he was dead, so it's the same. See you later. And she's like, I have lost the love of my life thinking that my dad will come back and he oh, might not even. Oh, yeah. And woman, so she's you like, got you played. Yeah, she's like, you guys played me like a fiddle, you bastards. And then she sings a reprise of Anthem, and that's the end. Wow. So, Chess, the musical where no one really gets what they want. Weirdly enough, the female songs, I think, are more well-known than the male songs, so... Probably for the best. No, no, on oh, nobody's side. Do you know that song? Da -da 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 -da. You've heard that before. And then someone else's story is, um... Long ago, in someone else's lifetime, someone with my name... Yeah, I know that one. You've heard that one. And then I know him so well is... Wasn't it good? Oh, so good. Wasn't he fine? Oh, I so thought that was fine. just a pop song. Isn't I didn't even realise that was No, because that's the thing. Like, there were quite a few musicals at that time that released concept albums first to build up hype okay. and then made the musical. And Chess was one of those. It was a concept album. So that's probably why you know it as a pop song as opposed to a musical theatre right, song. I'm with you now. I'm with you now. Yeah, so that was the plot of Chess. Josh, what are your thoughts? I think it sounds all right. I feel mm -hmm. like it, in some ways it might have dated horribly if you were to go and watch it again today. But it sounds like a cool show. In what way do you think it would have dated badly? Just the way you're talking about the music. It's like going all the women singing about guys and making it this oh, right, very male-centric story where the women are almost as much props as the costumes. 
No, the women aren't props. I wouldn't go that far. They're not. They, they sound a bit like props the way you're describing. Florence them. isn't, but then Florence is the only, apart from Svetlana, Florence is the only yeah. named female but again, character. It's still very much wives and girlfriends territory as opposed to anything else. So that was the plot of Chess. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. Would love to have you on the channel. Yeah. Check out Josh's video where he explains something I have no idea about to me. It's going to be great. And if you're watching this video first, then make sure you flick over to my channel to watch that video. I've and if you watch my video first, then thanks. <laughs> Yes, stay tuned for more theatre content from a UK perspective, sometimes with Josh, sometimes it's just me giving you advice and chatting about stuff that's not important. It is important. <laughs> and she puts so much work into these videos, guys. Aww. Support. Tell your friends to support. Tell your friends to like and leave a comment and subscribe and hit the bell button. Aww, I never tell people to hit the bell button. Thanks, babe. You're welcome. Stay tuned for more theatre content from a UK perspective and I will see you all in my next video. Bye friends! Goodbye!